Exploring the ancient origins of the mythical creatures, legends and their stories means learning something new every time. Our world is filled with all kinds of games, movies, books and even art, featuring a huge diversity of mythical creatures and beings. They have always been a very interesting topic to talk about, and most importantly, they are great for our imagination too. You must have heard of the Pegasus, vampires, or maybe a famous witch that caught your attention. All of them have a unique story behind. Each one of them has a strong personality, and they are everything but ordinary. The Legend of the Blair Witch We all remember that horror movie which was released back in 1999. It was a low-budget movie directed by Eduardo Sanchez and Daniel Myrick. The movie was based around the legend of a woman who many people believe was real. Ellie Kedwood is believed to be the Blair Witch. The origins of this famous legend seem to begin in Maryland, in the forests of the Black Hills. According to local traditions, it is believed to be the place not even Native American tribes dared to enter. Local folklore speaks of 1630, Colonel Nathaniel Blair, who led an expedition to cross the forest. Looking for a suitable place to build a fort, Nathaniel looked for help from the tribe in the area. Not very happy with his idea, the tribe sabotaged his expedition. Not giving up, Nathaniel decided to build the fort with his men, they baptized it with the Colonel's name. In just a couple of years, this site grew so much that it became the city of Blair in 1634. 150 years later, around 1785, Ellie Kedwood. Ellie Kedwood, a Blair resident, got accused of practicing strange witchcraft on several children. The children claimed Ellie dragged them out of their homes and had a strong wish to drink their blood. Soon after, Ellie Kedwood was convicted of witchcraft and exiled from Blair for good. They tied her to a wagon and abandoned her in the woods during the winter. As the days passed, many people of Blair began to feel a lot better. They believed Ellie had died from the cold. Curious as always, three of the children, together with their dogs, roamed around the forest to check whether Ellie had actually died. On their surprise, she was still alive. The boys ordered their dogs to bite her and then they beat her with tree branches. A couple of minutes later, they released her from the cart and decided to hang her from a tree until she died. After that day, many people claim there were numerous strange happenings around the area. Just a year later, half of the village's children had disappeared, including the three who killed Ellie. They have never been found again. 1820. Henry Burkett bought the abandoned town from the government and slowly he rebuilt all of the buildings, renaming the city after himself, Burkittsville. Between 1810 and 1940, there were various terrifying disappearances, strange deaths and a lot of mystery. Of course, 1940 was not the end of it. Between 1940 and 1941, a very disturbing incident happened. Eight children disappeared from the town. The people were shocked, terrified. Already unpleasant lives of the people of Burkittsville became even worse when the hermit Rustin Parr entered the market and started shouting, I have finally finished! Receiving no response from Rustin Parr, he led them to his cabin. At arrival, they found the bodies of seven children buried in seven tiny graves. The further research showed extreme signs of violence and evil rituals. Kyle Brody was the only child who survived this terrible massacre. Parr was sentenced to the gallows and mercilessly executed. The Majestic White Horse of Olympus, Pegasus Greek mythology is known for majestic creatures. Pegasus is one of them, a stunningly beautiful white horse with wings. Poseidon is said to be the father of Pegasus, whilst its mother was the well-known Gorgon Medusa. Pegasus is most known for its story with Perseus and Bellerophon, According to the legend, slaying of Medusa, one can find the narration of Pegasus' birth. It is believed this winged horse became the Mount of Bellerophon later on. According to one of the stories, Bellerophon visited the city of Tyrens. At the time, Proteus was the king and Thymboe was the queen. The queen actually fell in love with Bellerophon, even if he rejected her many times. 
she was humiliated. Thimbui went to her husband and accused Bellerophon of seducing her. Proteus was enraged. He sent Bellerophon with a letter to his father-in-law, the king of Lycia. The king was asked to kill the messenger of the letter. To Bellerophon's surprise, the king wanted to make his death harder. He sent him on a quest to kill the Chimera. Bellerophon was aware of the danger. He consulted Corinthian seer Polydos. Polydos advised him to look for Pegasus. According to the most popular version of this story, Athena actually brought Pegasus to Bellerophon and with the help of majestic Pegasus, he managed to successfully slay the Chimera. Bellerophon got pretty prideful after defeating the Chimera. He started to feel very ambitious. Zeus noticed this and he sent a gadfly to sting Pegasus. Instead, Bellerophon lost his balance and fell back to Earth. Pegasus survived and went on a journey to Mount Olympus. It is believed that Pegasus lived in Zeus's palace and that he often carried the gods' lightning and thunder. Our belief in vampires. It is often said the vampires are as old as the world. But to speak the truth, more recent arguments suggest that vampires and the undead belief got born in the 18th century. The tales of supernatural beings consuming the blood of the living have been found in closely every culture we have around the globe. Blood drinking is often attributed to spirits or demons who eat flesh or drink blood. Sometimes even the devil is synonymous with the vampire. The story of the first vampire is rather strange. The first vampire ever was not even a vampire at first. He was a human man named Ambrosio. According to the stories, series of blessings and curses transformed this young man into the first vampire to walk on our planet. It is said that the sun god Apollo cursed Ambrosio to his skin would burn on the sunlight. It is also said that Ambrosio gambled away his soul to Hades, the god of the underworld. Soon after, Apollo's sister, Artemis, made it so that Ambrosio's skin burned if he touches silver ever again. She felt bad for it, so instead of fixing her curse, she blessed him with the gift of immortality, speed and strength. For some reason, she also blessed him with the blood sucking. According to the original story, at first Ambrosio hunted swans and used their blood to write poems to his woman, Selene. Now that Ambrosio is a fully fledged vampire, he travelled to Italy, the city of Florence. He creates the first vampire clan in the city of Florence. It is believed that the members of this clan were most likely people or humans who wanted immortality and power. They traded their souls in order to achieve this kind of power. Many people believe that Ambrosio still lives and that he is residing somewhere in Florence. Pandora, the goddess of hell and hope. Most of us are familiar with Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. Not many, however, know the story about mankind's creation in Greek mythology. It is a slightly darker story than the book of Genesis, but it is very interesting too. To begin, according to Greek mythology, men and women were not created at the same time at all. Men existed longer than women. They degenerated over the ages. The creation of the first woman, Pandora, was not even a gift by the gods to a man. It was a punishment. The story of Pandora is somewhat linked with the titan Prometheus. His tale begins at Macon. Prometheus cut up an ox and divided it into two portions. One of the portions was smaller and it contained the meat of the animal wrapped up in the stomach of the ox, while the other one was bigger and it had animal's bones covered by glistening fat. Prometheus offered them to pick one of these two. The gods, of course, picked the bigger portion. They got tricked. Mad because of the Prometheus's trickery, Zeus took the fire to prevent him from cooking the meat. Prometheus decided he would not care and he stole the fire from the gods. As a result, Prometheus was punished and later on freed by Heracles. Zeus, of course, did not like that either. Punishing Prometheus alone was not enough for him. He wanted to punish mankind as well. Zeus created a maiden, Pandora. She soon had it all. The gods showered her with gifts. She got taught Athena's crafts 
and Aphrodite taught her about charm. Soon after, Pandora became a gift from Hermes to Epimetheus. Epimetheus was a brother of Prometheus. He wanted him not to accept any gifts from Zeus. Forgetting this warning, Epimetheus took Pandora as his wife. At their wedding, Zeus gives Pandora a wedding gift, a beautiful box, all under one condition. Pandora was not allowed to open this box, ever. As curious as Pandora was, it bothered her why Zeus give her a wedding gift she cannot even open to see. Eventually, Pandora could not think about anything else but opening this box. Zeus had it planned all along. He knew Pandora would sooner or later open the box, and what follows is a real disaster. After opening the box, the stream of ghostly creatures poured out of the box. Everything was covered in disease, misery, poverty, death and sadness. Pandora tried to close the box, but it was already too late. All of the content escaped from the box, except for one thing. Hope. Pandora decided to release the hope too. Even today, hope still remains. That was four true origins behind myths and legends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.